We have Josh Wilson uh, on with us here, and it's been a while, been more than a minute. So the other day, uh, Betty Rock is uh, going through Instagram, and she told me that she had seen a post of yours celebrating six years of sobriety. So in my head, naturally, I do some math, and I'm like, wait a minute, I've known him that long, and he was doing Christian music. Yep. Oh, okay, now, so this is like a hidden side of, you know, what's going on, you know, during your Christian music career, and I'm like, how could that be? Sure. And I'm curious, I, we want to have you in instead of just speculate or talk. <laughs> about you uh like we're like well let's get the story from him directly what was going on man well that's that's a loaded i guess a loaded question and honestly this is the first time i've spoken publicly about it cool. so i'm sure i'll be you know stumbling over my words here but not a problem and the next time you have something fall apart in your life we'll have you on again yeah. it's great how exciting it gets to come air all the dirty laundry here it's so good this right? is a safe place for the whole world to hear all your things it's not safe um, uh no so yeah what, uh, what what was happening well okay so long story short i've dealt with anxiety for most of my life really? as long as i can remember and you know for a guy that deals with that Alcohol in the short term seemed like a good solution to that. You can sort of turn down the volume mm -hmm. on that those feelings. Totally get that. And let me talk. Let tell you this. You talk about safe place. There's like zero judgment. I know we're kidding around about some things, but you have zero judgment here. Like, yeah. uh, like I'm a guy that did drugs and like way harder than alcohol. Sure. Uh, and so like I know addiction. I know what yeah. that's like to walk through that. I know all the sides of it. So yeah. you're not getting any judgment here. I'm just curious what was going yeah. on. No, well, I mean, at, at first, I think it was to sort of quiet those bigger questions and those anxious feelings, and then eventually, you know, alcohol is an addic addictive substance, so surprise, surprise, I got addicted to it. Right. And then it's kind of exactly what you said, you know, uh, this is, you know, you had this secret side. I was, I was asking the same questions. How can I, it's sort of this public figure who sings about my faith, how can I have this problem? How can I get help? Because how can I confess or admit this to somebody? Mm -hmm. And I, I think I struggled with it longer than I should, certainly longer than I should have, because, you know, the truth will set you free. We bring those things into the light. That was the hardest thing for me to do because I was ashamed. I was embarrassed. And I had tried to, to quit many times on my own. At first, I would say it was, was in moderation. And then, you know, as, as time went on, I eventually felt like I needed it to go to sleep. Um, yeah. And again, in the short term, it sort of turned down the volume on the anxiety but then the next morning you kind of wake up and it's worse than okay. it was. And, I get uh, that. I totally get that. Yeah. And and honestly, Wally, we all have our stuff, right? We, it may not be alcohol or even hard drugs, but we've all got what we turn to. Um, even now, the, the three of us have the things that we turn to, and it may not be some substance or something like right. that. But what we go to instead of what we know we should. Well, okay. and two, like the anxiety part of it, I know a lot of people, like I, I personally can attest to how that can play a role in your life and how you want something to calm you down inside of your head. Sure. And so I can understand where that would be a slippery slope. For yeah. sure. But your situation, so it started with the anxiety, whereas some people say, well, you shouldn't have anxiety because you're a believer and you shouldn't <laughs> even deal with those things. So you've got that and then you've got the alcohol issue. Yeah. You, it's a twofold situation. Yeah. Going Can I on. respond to the first thing? Yeah. Uh, believers shouldn't have anxiety. Well, I follow Jesus and Jesus had anxiety and had the worst panic attack on record. Let's think about the garden, the day, yeah. the night before he, the cross. He sweat blood. If that's not a panic attack <laughs> and anxiety, I'm serious. Yeah. I don't know what I've is. I've never thought of it like and that. And so when I pray to Jesus, not only do I have a God who's there for me and will be with me and carry me, but I have a God who, who can literally say, I know exactly how that feels mm -hmm. and it's going to be okay. Being really honest, it's not a, the easiest thing to do in the Christian world. So we're kind of talking about, okay, how do you balance doing what you do for a living, getting on stage and telling people you know, about Jesus? while you have this secret battle that you're fighting with alcohol like and that I would almost assume I'd have to assume that makes it worse honestly yeah it becomes sort of the self-perpetuating cycle of trying to, to stop something unable to do so and then so the shame drives you back to exactly it. and anyone that's dealt with addiction you know that cycle and to a smaller degree I think we all know exactly how that can happen because I think we've all done that to a smaller scale. Maybe we're not on a stage in front of a microphone, but we've all told somebody, I'm okay when you're not. Right. All of us Christians have done that. I think the temptation is to think I need to, to hide this struggle uh, because a Christian shouldn't deal with this. And that's, that's not why I'm a, I'm a Christian because I struggle, because I need Jesus and because I need him to save me. So yeah, man, I mean, there's a lot of cognitive dissonance there and it led to, to more struggle. 
Um, but I can say uh, when, when I finally brought it into the light with my trusted friends and wife and counselor uh, is when I started to get the help I need. And, and to be honest, also to answer your question, it's taken me six years to talk about it for that very same reason. And that's it, because inside of the church, I don't know if you know this or not, we can be a little judgy. Well, well which church do you go <laughs> I to? I, I never know. heard of that. <laughs> All of them. Uh, you know, but, but it's true, though. So it's like, OK, so why did you feel the need to post this now? Was it because it's far enough in the past that you almost get a pass for it? Uh, versus it being like yeah. last year, you know, kind of thing? Yeah, man. Honestly, that's part of the reason is because in early sobriety, first of all, I didn't know if, if it would work. I didn't know if I could stay quick. Sure, I get that. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. Yeah. Second of all, enough time has passed where I feel like I've gotten a little perspective. Um, and and honestly, not to over-spiritualize it, but third, I think God was telling me it's time. Mm-hmm. And I had a conversation with a friend about some new songs I'm writing. And he said, I'm at the stage, well, he told, to, told me, you're at the stage of your life where um, for all these years, you've had something to offer in music, and maybe it's musicianship or catchy songs or whatever. And now what you're able to offer people through your music and through your words is wisdom because now mm. you have experience. And he said to me, you need to be writing the songs that your 80-year-old self will be proud of. Mm. Oh, that's good. And that changed everything for me. Well, that's an interesting perspective because Jason Gray, uh, he went through a divorce, okay? And I, am I supposed to say Am I allowed to say this? I forget. I think I can. Uh, no, I'm kidding. He, like, we, I've had this conversation with Thanks him. Thanks for the content, Jason. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, no, but he, he, when he was going through this, his counselor told him, hey, I don't want you to talk about this. It's not smart to talk about this now because you're still in it. It's still fresh. Yeah. You don't have a perspective that can help anybody yet because you're angry, you're frustrated, you're sad. Yeah. And he's like, when you get on the other side of it and you have a healthier viewpoint of it, then you have something to offer. I think yeah. it's similar in addiction because when you're in addiction, you're just trying to get out of it every day and sure. you don't have a healthy perspective yet. So I'm, I'm thrilled that you're talking about this. Dude. I've heard people say to speak from your scars and not from your open wounds. Yeah, that's I good. I think there's a lot of wisdom in that absolutely and I, I probably could have done it sooner but i'll be honest man the, the last few years with covid and with shows getting canceled and all mm-hmm. kinds of other stuff in yeah. our lives my honestly my anxiety and depression have been so bad that up until now i don't think i've been in a good headspace to be honest about sure. it and now i'm writing a song right now it's just called tell the truth and it's freeing you don't have yeah. to keep up with who you've told what and mm-hmm. and you just don't have to hide and i think it's actually the way to follow jesus that's awesome now like christian musicians are humans we've talked about that with you and just in general um and they have normal problems and hang-ups like everybody else but there's this weird thing, and you probably felt this, maybe you did, maybe you didn't, but like, I think Christian musicians get held to a higher standard mm-hmm. than everybody else. Is that is that accurate, and is it fair? Uh, yes, it's accurate, and uh, no, it's not f- like fair in, in the sense that I don't think we should put anyone on a pedestal. My dad's a pastor, and I've watched him my whole life carry the weight of, it's a large church in Texas, it's like a couple thousand people. Mm-hmm. And I've watched him try to grapple with, you know, being honest and being real, but only so far because, you know, my my pastor better not deal with this or that. And and I think, so my father-in-law, who's also a pastor, he runs, you're you're familiar with Celebrate Recovery. Mm -hmm. He he helps with Celebrate Recovery for pastors uh, or or CPR is what they call it. And um, like pastors, anyone who stands on a stage or like you guys in front of a microphone, there's this pressure. We're, we're all being somewhat performative right now. There's Absolutely. All, we're all self, constantly self-censoring. And yeah, how much do you share? And, and I'm not saying you guys are hiding anything, but you see what I'm saying. That like, he is. Uh, yeah, we, all, we know that. Yep. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> She's, got some just, she's hiding that she's actually perfect. And, yeah. Uh, oh, and well she's done. praying. She's praying for yeah. you and I. <laughs> yeah. And our struggles. That right did not now. help me out at all. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, people on stage. I guess a couple things. One, don't don't put anybody on a pedestal. And two, if you're on a stage. Um, <sighs> You don't have to act like you've got it all together. And I think now more than ever, people are craving honesty and vulnerability. Mm -hmm. So I I hope that the folks watching this, sure, there'll be maybe a few folks who take issue with it. But I think most people who are listening to this or watching this on social media are going, oh, my goodness, that's a relief. Me, too. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think, too, like what you were saying, when you put somebody on a pedestal, that's not fair because no human being is going to be perfect. We're never going to. Um, live up to what God was able to do. And so we're always going to be disappointed if we put them on the same level as God. We're always going to be disappointed. And two, I think now that you're sharing this part of your story, it's going to impact so many other people's lives because who knows who else is hiding, you know, an addiction. Mm -hmm. And so with someone speaking up and saying, hey, I know what it's like to 
have faith, but also be struggling and mm-hmm. be hiding it, mm-hmm. man, that's going to speak volumes to so many. I think that's the main reason I decided to finally just do it. When I when I did that post, you guys have heard sometimes, you know, you just have to be brave for 30 seconds. Right, and then, right. And do the thing. Sometimes all you need is 20 seconds of insane courage. When I was driving here, my hands were shaking. I was like, just do the thing. Be brave. for Because and that's exactly why I hope someone hears this and go, whatever the thing is for you, it's it's okay, and you can tell somebody. Find a trusted person to tell, mm-hmm. um, and it's going to be okay. Now, do you subscribe to the theory of once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic? Because I tell know that's more. very popular inside of Celebrate Recovery. Like, I understand that. And, mm-hmm. and as somebody who has dealt with addiction, I understand the concept of that. Yeah. There's a part of me that believes that predicates you to failure because mm. it what it does is it gives you the out for I the reason they do it is to make you always mindful of your addiction you can always slip back in. Sure. To me I see it on the opposite way of it allows me to slip back in because I go oh, I'm always an addict. Uh. I'm never going to change. I'm never going to uh morph from this. This is always going to be me. So it makes sense I would mess up. So that's why I've always kind of struggled with that. Now, however it works for somebody, I don't care like if it gets you clean, great. But I've always wrestled with that concept because I I have to believe that God does change us mm-hmm. and can put things in the rear view. Yeah. You know, even though it, it it's tempting sometimes. I mean, I got what 30 years sober or whatever, but yeah. like uh, there's still temptation, but I don't see it as, oh, I'm an addict, you know? Yeah. I, I don't think I would use the language of that I'm an addict. Um, alcoholism runs in my family. Yeah. I think I'm genetically predisposed for my brain to see that that way. Um, and I think everybody's path is a little bit different. And I think whatever language they find to use that helps them is fine. You yeah. know, I, um, for me, I needed one-on-one counseling. I've, I've been to a few AA meetings and it's helpful, but I'm just kind of, I'm an introvert. So I needed one-on-one rather than like a big sure. group share thing. I think, I think the path is different for everybody. Um, I have friends who have gotten sober, friends who are trying to get sober, um, who are they? Are they Christian artists? Right, let me make you a list. <laughs> let me make you a list. Oh, you would be surprised. No, I'm just kidding. And it's very, you know, that lifestyle is very conducive for, yeah. for wanting to wind down. Yeah. Anyway, um, I have friends who have quit drinking who have never been tempted again. That's not my story. These last three years with COVID and sure. as I've struggled with depression, there's been a lot of times I've wanted to kind of disappear. Yeah. And, but what I do is I sort of, they say to play the tape forward, what will this feel like and look like tomorrow? Mm. And I know yes. that this is not a long-term solution for me. It's only Jesus who satisfies that God-shaped hole only fits right. God. And in the moment, you kind of have to deal with those cravings and temptations and whatever we try to put there, it doesn't fill it the same way that Christ is supposed to. Oh yeah. Whether it's an addiction, whether it's a temptation, that moment where you are dwelling on it is vital to take that captive because I'm like, how many affairs start that way? It's just the thought. It's the fleeting thought, the innocent thought. And then you start thinking, this would be great. And if you, you have to get to the point where you think, okay, you have to think of, in this example, like, how is this going to devastate my wife tomorrow when she finds out, you know, yeah. kind of thing, and project yourself into that place and go, okay, I need to get this knocked out now, you know, sure. whether it's how is this, how is using today going to affect my family tomorrow or whatever. Yeah. So I think that's really, really, really solid advice. And to go back to the addictive mindset, if if that's what's keeping someone who's listening to this in that cycle, just know that I, I had I tried to quit probably a hundred times, and it wasn't until the hundred and first sure. that it worked. So even if you've tried a hundred times and failed, keep trying because one of those times it's, it's going to work. And, now, and then for those who have have quit and gone back, you know don't don't think of it as an all or nothing thing. Reset. Like, today's a new day. That's yeah. right. Did your you mentioned your wife earlier when we were talking? And so did your wife have a come to Jesus meeting with you and be like, you have to like this, you are putting our family. Cause my wife had to have one of those with yeah. me. Um, actually no. So I'm a, I'm an expert hider. I'm a pastor's kid. Yeah. So I've always <laughs> been good at sort yeah. of, you know, sadly yeah. curating what I want people to think of me. Sure. She, she knew I drank. We, you know, we both, she, she just thought I drank in moderation. Right. Um, but I was, I had sort of a secret stash where I'd go really? have a few more sips. She didn't know the extent of the problem I had, but I'll say this. Three years before I got sober, I told her, I said, I'm, I'm drinking too much. I have a problem. I'm going to stop for 90 days and sort of reset. Right. And I did and, and then sort of just came right back. And then, and then from then on, it was kind of hiding it from her. And that's another reason it took me so long is I was ashamed to tell her. 
it was less about the alcohol and more about the hiding mm -hmm. from her. But I can't tell you how much grace she gave me. Um, I had I told a friend before I told her. I said, "Look, really? I have a problem. I need you to know because I need you to keep me accountable to tell her right and to get some help." And then um, you've met my wife. She's the sweetest person, and um, I, you know, it's her. It's it's my friends. It's people people care about you, and if you're honest, um, I don't think. The people who really love you are going to judge you. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. They they want the best for you. They want you to get it worked out, and they'll be there for you. So uh, it brings me to this question here, like kind of last question. What do you hope that talking about all of this now from your past and your story, what do you hope comes out of this? I hope someone else finds help, and I hope someone else finds Jesus. I have been a follower of Jesus for the majority of my life. He saved me from so many things. Um, but this is sort of a new relationship and a new experience these last few years. I'm learning what grace actually means. And so I hope that by me sharing this, uh, whatever it is the folks who are listening are dealing with, Jesus is bigger, Jesus is better, and he's always there waiting with open arms uh, and never judgment, always love. Okay, so my question is, you know that there is going to come a time where you're going to be tempted to go back to it. You're going to deal with another bout of anxiety, depression, yeah. whatever. What is your plan of action when that time comes? Mostly therapy, um, tell, talking about it with, with friends. And I'm not currently in counseling, but when I get low, when things get particularly bad, I go back to, to counseling. And, and I'm just always in, in constant contact with friends and with my wife. Hmm. She always knows how I'm doing. And Well, I think that that plays a part in it. Like I, I've had friends that have dealt with depression, and I think a big part factor is that you don't have that group of people that you can that can love on you you haven't built that community yeah and so was that something that you were kind of aware of when you were walking through this yeah isolation has been a problem uh, for me in a lot of times certainly during my addiction and then when I felt more anxious or depressed more so depressed the last thing you want to do is be with people but that's the first thing you need right mm -hmm. and so thankfully I've had friends who would be like hey we're going to do this thing or I'm, mm. you're going to come over. Um, but there's lots of practical ways that I sort of keep myself from getting quite that low. Mm -hmm. um, easy things, not easy, just routine, you know, exercise, trying to, trying to eat well, trying to stay involved in my church and mm -hmm. in, in the word and prayer and meditation. And, um, but yeah, when I'm, when I'm dipping low, um, well, during COVID, you know, when I couldn't go see a counselor or anything, there's, yeah. for, for anyone who's dealing, is this the camera that people are watching? For yes. This? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, anybody who's who's dealing with addiction, there's there's online AA groups. Um, Wally, I don't know much about NA, but is it a similar? Or yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. For, whatever Just for narcotic. Yeah, what whatever you're addicted to, there's online stuff where you can get on. If you can't afford therapy, that's free. Any of those meetings are free to, to talk. I think it's so helpful to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Those... Um, Addictions thrive in the dark, and when you when you shine a light on, when you shine the light of Jesus on them, and honesty and truth, that truth actually will set you free. Mm -hmm. There's this band I know that their singer was <clears throat> notorious alcoholic, and uh, it was interesting. One of the lines, because sometimes you get glimpses into people's lives from their music and their things yeah. they write, and one of the lines was, "It's like, uh, why do I always come alive at the time it's tied at the time I have to hide." And it's mm. like, so he, he's drinking and he's like starting to feel it. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. This is me. And then he's like, oh no, this is me. Yeah. And I got to hide now and pull back. Yeah. And then that's where the danger comes is when you isolate yourself mm -hmm. from people. It's it, those things just get worse, man. Bringing stuff into the light is it's hard. It's, 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 it, I, and I commend you for talking about this because trust me, like it, it's not an easy thing to do, mm -hmm. but I think the payoff for it for other people is kind of finding purpose in your own pain. The payoff for other people can be huge as yeah. you continue to write about this and talk about it, you know? Well, I'll say this too. You can actually go through a lot of my back catalog and you can hear me trying to write myself out of an addiction. Mm. I, it wasn't pure hypocrisy. I wasn't trying to lie. I was trying to to fix it aspirational and it doesn't mean yeah, yeah it doesn't mean i wasn't a christian i wasn't following jesus it it just meant i was trying to do it myself 
Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, finally, you know, I loosen my grip and you just open your hands and you learn what surrender actually is. Mm. And I see, I think that's a, that's a hard thing for us to just surrender. What What is the difference between the trying to do it yourself? What does that look like? And then giving it to God? What's the difference? Well, specifically for alcohol, it's waking up in the morning going, I'm not going to drink tonight. I'm not going to drink tonight. Mm. And then as the day goes on, eventually by that night, your body's craving it, your brain's craving it. And right. you're like, okay. I'm not going to drink that much tonight. One, yeah. more, one <laughs> yeah. more night. One more night. I'll, yeah. I'll stop tomorrow. And then, yeah. you know, and I, so that's that's the I can I can fix this yeah, and I control. think yeah I think actually letting Jesus fix it meant telling a human mm. um, a human who because it brings humility oh yeah, yeah yeah you think I want to come in here and talk about this I don't but I I hope I hope it helps somebody else to be honest about those things. absolutely I do believe that I, was, I like otherwise I honestly like I it's not like ooh I want the sensationalism of it yeah. you know no I want the story you know like I have some friends that uh, they do uh, kingdom story like uh, the Irwin brothers mm-hmm. and when they did the whole uh, uh, Jesus music yeah and his point to having people talk about stuff was he, he said that he's like I don't want the like the scandal I want the story yeah you know because the story is what leads to health and help you know yeah. people it, it, this, the scandal is the part that gets sensationalized yeah. well one more question what has been the feedback since you've been posting about it on social media what is what are what are other people saying to you well first of all I can say there's not been there's not been a negative comment everyone that's wow. actually spoken up that's saying something for social media did you did you hide mine then like <laughs> <laughs> I, you know it's it's wild i think that josh wilson i knew i couldn't trust him <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i just muted your accounts while <laughs> thank you <laughs> um but the response has been thank you me too thank you for your honesty it's so nice to see that you know people who who i think must have it all together don't because we all need jesus in that way I'm having lunch with somebody this week that said, hey, man, it's been a long time. I'm struggling with this. Um, can we meet up and talk about it? Nice. So it's exactly what I hoped, which was like just using using my story and being honest about it in hopes that some other people can find freedom. So I'm curious, like, what was it that helped you? Like, do you have any resources that somebody else is struggling with that might give them some direction to go? Yeah, I would say, first of all, there's probably most likely someone at your church who can counsel you for free. Um, um, if you can get into to therapy or paid counseling, awesome. If you don't have the money for that, there's there's free resources online. That's that's one other. And then a book that I found really helpful is This Naked Mind by Annie Grace. She's a recovering alcoholic. And mm. I, I found the tools in that book to be very worthwhile. Oh, there you go. Well, that's good. I like practical things, too, because I believe in prayer. But yeah. then I also believe in personal responsibility. You got to do the work. You know? All of it. 